What up, Impact Wrestling fans? It is your boy, BQ. Welcome back to the channel. We are one week removed from Slammiversary, and I'm going to pose this question to you guys because I've had many conversations with Impact fans and then those who were not Impact fans that maybe gave the pay-per-view a chance or have been you know, watching lately because of the buzz and everything going on. So when Slammiversary came off the air, we were, you know, there was a lot of buzz. We were at a high because we we really enjoyed the pay-per-view. I think the wrestling itself didn't li live up to the last couple Slammiversaries, but you know, the, the whole presentation of the show, despite there being no crowd, no audience, you know, it was good and we, we left very happy. Now, I've had conversations with, with, with some people who were actually disappointed with the show. Um, and this is the reason being, they teased a lot. They, they, they put a lot of teasers out there for us. And um, I, was, I had a lot of concern that with this, the, with the promotion and marketing, which I thought was good, I had a lot of concern, concern that they were over-promising the show. And that's when you run into problems. When you, you over-promise and under-deliver, that's when you run into issues. If you've been following me from day one, you know, I used to always really preach under-promise, over-deliver. That's how I, you know, that's how I view things. And that's how you make things, um, you know, uh, buzzworthy and and uh, and the momentum to continue and people to get excited and put on a good product, to put on a, the best product you over deliver. So we're a week away from Slammiversary. They tease a lot of surprises, you know, and I had I had one buddy I was talking to where he said he didn't feel that Slammiversary did anything to make him want to tune in the following week. You know, and that, that that's his prerogative. He doesn't feel like he, he wants to turn tune in the next week. But the surprises we got were EC3, Heath, Motor City Machine Guns, The Good Brothers, and Eric Young. Now you can throw Brian Myers in there if you want. Obviously, he wasn't part of Slammiversary. You know, the following episode of Impact is when he showed up. But uh, it wasn't a follow yeah, following episode. So those were our surprises. Now here's one thing I want to we, we got we want to take this into consideration, okay? EC3 and Heath, there is an angle, a storyline going on where those guys don't work here. They're not contracted wrestlers with Impact Wrestling. They just showed up. They've broken the building. It's you know COVID-19. There's one entrance, one exit. Um, they, they managed to get through that one entrance, get past security on a closed set, and, and, and get in the ring. All right? Um, <laughs> you, obviously, you obviously can see that bothers me a little bit. But... We're, we're going to get away from that for a second. My opinion on it. Um, if that's true, we're running with that angle where EC3 and Heath are not supposed to work there. That means your surprises for Slammiversary were the Motor City Machine Guns and Eric Young. And then the Good Brothers, if you want to look at it like that, but they were announced earlier in the day. But if we want to go with that angle where these guys don't work here, that means you only had two scheduled surprises for Slammiversary, which doesn't make sense because Don Callis, after Motor City Machine Guns came out, had said, oh, there's at least two more surprises tonight. Well, that, I guess he wanted to throw Good Brothers in there even though they weren't a surprise. So what I'm saying, like, I'm, I'm obviously overanalyzing a little bit here and, you know, I, I get that, all right, that's what I do. But I do want to know from you guys, you know, just have a discussion with you guys. Where, did this live up to the hype for you? As far as the surprises, because, you know, they they, take, they tease Sting, they tease Kurt Angle, Mike Bennett, James Storm, you know, um, I'm trying to think who else they, they threw, but, you know, Aces and Eights, which I don't think we're going to get Aces and Eights. I think that was kind of their way of trying to throw people off the scent of who, who could show up. Uh, I don't think the roster's big enough to introduce Aces and Eights, unless it was like D'Lo and Ken Anderson by themselves, you know what I mean? So I, I don't totally see that, but it, it could happen. And, uh, and then they tease Rusev, which may or may not happen. I don't I don't think it is, but it's a possibility. It's a you know it's a possibility he was slated for Slamversary, couldn't make it. We don't really know. So uh, you know maybe he was going to be in the main event too. Who, who really knows? But you know surprise wise, that's what they did. And then obviously they they did a surprise with Rich Swan, which a lot of people liked and a lot didn't like. I think I would say more, most people didn't like it because I see what they were trying to do, but it, it didn't get over well. 
But a week later, are you guys looking at, you know, who we have with the Impact Wrestling roster now? Are you satisfied with it? Do you think Impact lived up to the hype with what they were teasing? Did they did they overpromise, underdeliver, or are you happy with what they did? Let me know in the comments. I will talk to you guys later, and I'm out. Peace.